Every 12 hours, old clocks start over. It wasn't a big deal. But it is a big deal, because our time doesn't start over. And it would be nice if clocks somehow could represent the scarcity of time, but that's just the tip of the problem. By living around the clock, we tend to think in 12 hour increments, which is a very narrow perspective into the future. We do have calendars, but they are static and more suited to keep track of tasks rather than to understand the pace at which weeks and months are moving along. So I'm building a machine that can visually show time on a much larger scale than a clock, while giving a gentle reminder of how valuable time actually is. This was a challenging project and the fact that I knew nothing about 3D printing, electronics, encoding didn't help to speed things up. But after a lot of learning on the job, many sleepless nights and a few iterations, I can finally share with you what I got. My goal with this project was to give body to time. But it turns out people much cleverer than me already did it a long time ago. It's called an hourglass. I love these things because they let you physically see time moving. You get to witness a real medium, sand in this case, get consumed by the passing of time. Super cool. And yes, an hourglass has a few limits. It will never tell you when to wake up or if you're late for work. But it turns time into something real. The problem is that pretty much anything else about this thing has to be changed in order to make it work on a larger time scale. Which is why I spent six weeks 3D modeling a new design. Trying to combine all the moving parts we'll need with the fact that it has to look cool. Which is why a 3D printer spawned next to my desk at some point, saving me years of work and a huge pile of cash in parts. But let's start from the top. The first thing that needed a modern touch was all this mess behind the glass. So I switched the sand for, well technically it's still sand, but in the smoother form of glass. These as time units are a lot more manageable than thin sand. I just need a funnel that lets through one marble at a time, with a little agitator on the side. Otherwise the marbles cluster together and get stuck above the hole. And with an eccentric trapdoor at the bottom I can snatch one marble at a time from the funnel and drop it down into a tube. The marbles will actually come out very slowly, because the central section of this hourglass works in a very different way than your regular hourglass. The center is where the magic happens. In a regular hourglass, the sand just falls through the middle. But in this hourglass, the marble doesn't fall. It's supported on the sides by these little wheels and gently moves down at a programmable speed. So it can take one day to get all the way down, or one week, or one month, even one year, why not? My original idea was to have like a life clock with a fixed mechanical speed of one marble per month. But what if the most important thing in your life is a three-year project and you want to count weeks? So I switched to electronics and made it variable. It works with a stepper motor turning a captive piece of old threads that move this slider thanks to a threaded insert and four guiding shafts. Then, once you know the amount of turns it takes to move the slider all the way down, you can relate that to the amount of steps the stepper motor has to take and determine the speed of the motor according to the time frame you want the marble to follow. And the whole thing works with just one motor that drives the left screw from the bottom, while this timing belt keeps the right screw in sync. But my favorite part about this whole mechanism is the release system. The wheels are spring-loaded, so to drop the marble into the third and final stage, the slider moves forward just a bit, forcing the wheels against the edges of these grooves and parting them away just enough to make the marble fall. And this fully marble brings us to the third and final stage, which is by far my favorite. The third stage is what makes this clock different because it's where the marbles get destroyed. And the reason for this destruction is that past time doesn't come back. So, contrary to clocks and traditional hourglasses, this particular time device is only one way. The only problem is that I had greatly underestimated the complexity required to design something that could crush these marbles. You know, while keeping everything small, cool and neat. 
And if I was having trouble just designing these parts, making them out of steel was going to be a nightmare especially because I was already over time, over budget, over everything. But then someone unexpected knocked at my door. Excuse me for a second. That's right folks, PCBWay was kind and generous enough to reach out and offer to make parts for this project. And it really warmed my heart, because the channel is small, but mostly because these parts are awesome. This very cool looking hammer is D2 tool steel. Because since I don't have to make it, why not using a fancy steel? Thank you, PCB way. Check them out if you make parts and for some reason you don't have a 5 axis milling machine or an EDM wire machine in the basement because they do a lot more than just custom PCBs. And if I manage to finish this video in time, they are running a Christmas sale on their website. Check it out, link in the description. Back to the mechanism. As for how the hammer mechanism works, I have to redesign the thing a bunch of times because I had wildly underestimated the crappy torque of the stepper motor. So I ended up making a gearbox with a 1 to 32 reduction ratio to move the thing. And the way it works is that this gear is missing a few teeth, so at the right point the motor stops and the hammer drops. And one last thing that I want to show you before putting all these parts together is the little thing that make the whole machine work. I've never used an Arduino or any other microcontroller before this project and I didn't know how to code and I still don't, to be perfectly honest. But even with the basic, basic knowledge I managed to acquire to put this whole thing together, I can now make stuff that I could not have made in any other way. And the basics are actually pretty simple. On the board you get a microcontroller and some pins. And you get the code that you write on your computer and upload on the microcontroller. The microcontroller runs the code and the code tells to the pins to run current or not, turning on or off the stuff attached to the pins. And that's pretty much it. Now pins can also receive signals, like from switches or sensors, and then you can use those signals to set condition in your code, like turning on a fan if the temperature goes above a certain value. This is just the, the very, very hyper basic superficial layer, okay? You can build infinite level of complexity around this. And by the way, all these components are very affordable. So between 3D printing and affordable electronics you can really make a robot with no huge expenses. And now, my dear friends, let's see how all these parts works together.